All right, guys. Hey, welcome to the FFL Sky's the Limit uh, Sky Point Bay Shop call. My name is Stevie. I'll be your host today. Today, we have a good friend of mine, integrity partner, uh, Dominique Rogers, who's going to be going over how to get a new agent dialing and selling immediately. Um, I had a chance to spend some time with Dom this past few days um, and learn a lot about how he's growing his agency and teaching brand new agents how to get in the field and selling insurance at a very, very high level. You know, one of the things that I'll tell you, too, is like if you've watched enough training videos on YouTube, you will understand that Dominique Rogers is by far the hands down the best appointment setter that we have in the company and one of the best um, sales trainers that we have, too. So uh, please help me welcome uh, Integrity Partner, one of our very own friends, Dominique Rogers. Me on, Steve. Uh, it was a blast. Always is a blast to, 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 to get to work with you, but it was great to get to see you, man, uh, last week and, and uh, get some time together. And it seems like we've been seeing each other a lot more Absolutely. over the past three, four months, which is a very good thing. And, um, and it leads to a lot of information sharing, a lot of growth, a lot of, you're just learning all the time. And I figure the more you, even as you start growing in this business, you want to always remember that you don't know what other people know. Right. And you know what you know, and you know what you go get, you know, but sometimes you have to go out there and get what other people know. And that's what hanging out with guys like you, and even just dude being in the airport and just sitting down with you and Trey for dude, 30, 40 minutes, dude, I, I came back with like, okay, all right, this is this is the way I need to be thinking. This is the actions I need to be taking. And, and hopefully we can uh, do that, you know, I mean, throughout you know, through, through, throughout the longevity of this company and your career. Absolutely. So thank you for having me on here, man. Um, I want to first talk about, you know, um, well, first, thank you for having me on. All right. But the, 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 the biggest piece I believe in growing your business is the ability to simplify. Okay. The ability to simplify things. I just had a staff meeting today and we were talking about warm market recruiting and, um, and she goes, well, I'm talking to people about this. And, you know, what if they say no? Or like, if I'm pushing them to do it and I go, well, hold on, let, let, let's back up a little bit. What are you saying? Well, I'm asking them, you know, do they know anybody who wants to, you know, who wants to sell or they want to recruit anybody? I'm like, yeah, that'd probably turn me off too. I was like, but what if you said, hey, you, hey, Dom, you know, the way that like, we just got you in class and we're going to help you out with leads and et cetera. Who else do you know? need some help like 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 you needed the help boom next thing right. you know you're not chasing you're not chasing, you're not chasing them no more <laughs> you're right. not you're not banging them you're not you know you're, it's none of that it's just a, now it's about how you how you put it you know what i mean when you put it that way i believe is most important so as we're going through this when you put it that way as it pertains to new agents and them getting in the field and getting on the phone is really what's most important because you may go well i'm doing this or i got this boot i'm like i know dude but are they hearing it that way right or are they hearing, bro i gotta know every one of these carriers i gotta know this like i just got a text today from a guy he goes hey man seems like i bit off more than i can chew i don't really know anything about the products da, 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 da. i go hey dude i know you don't like you're a professional baseball player i you just passed the test I know you don't know any of that stuff. Be clear though, but you do know how to read and you do know how to follow directions, right? He goes, yeah. I was like, that's all you need to do then. Don't worry about all the stuff you don't know. I know you don't know those things either. Be clear. Right. And I'm excited to work with you. So I'm excited to work with you. And I know you don't know anything, but you're afraid to work with me because you don't know anything. Let's think about that. Say it again out loud. Make sense? Right. Like, like oh, I got it. So, but it's perspective. I got to give John It's perspective. I have to give him because then he goes, when you put it that way, I'm like, yeah, simplify it because it seems really hard when you have all these carriers coming at you, you got this going on, you got that going on. It seems like a lot, but when I go, Hey, just stay right here. So what we're going to talk about today is how to simplify Stephen. Okay. How to make things um, easy for you to understand. And John Wetmore says, Dude, I just want to make sure there's no confusion. Don Wetmore is big on like, we both know what the play is. If it doesn't work out, you can't bitch moan or complain because we were very clear. Absolutely. On where to fall. You're either doing this or you're doing that. 
But if there's no clear expectation on what those two things are, and it's not simplified, because if there's more than two outcomes, it's too, it's confusing. It's too much. Does that make sense? If there's yeah. more than like, well, you could do it this, or you could do it. No, 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 no. You either do it this way or you do it this way. And one's right and one's going to be wrong. I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. It doesn't mean my way or the highway. It just means I'm the one responsible for teaching you how to sell insurance. So I guess it's got to be my way. You'd be like, that's too hard. I'm like, Sean didn't ask me what sales tactic or what, how I wanted to learn insurance when I started. <laughs> he didn't go, hey, Dom, are you more of an auditory or are you more of a visual learner? <laughs> he didn't go, he, he, he didn't care because he knew the type of teacher he was. Make sense? Absolutely. So I, I think too many of us, Stephen, are trying to be, are trying to be this different teacher all the time versus, dude, the student's the student. All right. And the student can change to you. You need to be you because if you're changing all the time, that's where it becomes confusing. And that's why you're wondering, well, why did that work with this guy? But it didn't work with this guy. Well, because you changed, <laughs> you weren't consistent, right? If I know being simple works, I'm going to stay simple. Even if somebody who comes in is crazy complex, they want to know more. Here's somebody comes in, they pass their tests. Or maybe they're not even done with their test yet, right? They get into the course. Hey, man, I just want to know about, you know, how those leads work, right? Now, be clear. I'm headhunting. I'm headhunting. I'm finding people I want to bring into my business. And um, I'm going to, I'm helping them start the business. Meaning, I'm not looking for people. Now, I'm not saying I'm not, all right? I don't have the people that are coming in with 10, 15, 20 Gs in the bank ready to throw out a business. It's just that, that's, not, that's not who we're helping right now. Right. So our agents are coming in, maybe lack of experience, maybe lack of finances. So we help them get into the business, whether it be leads, licensing, whatever the case may be. All right. A lot of leads. OK, um, because without leads, you're going to die. And I don't want anybody coming in this business thinking that they could spend 200 bucks, 100 bucks. Even if somebody's watching this right now going, I did that. I'm like, I know you did, dude. I know you did, but that ain't going to work for everybody. I get it. All right. But I have to let people know that you have to be spending a thousand bucks plus to start with us. So if I set it that set it that way and I let them know that, hey, I'm going to be helping you out with leads, but here's what you're going to have to do to, to get that. I have a little bit more, I have a lot more weight and whether folks follow directions or not. This is why I love helping agents out with leads and giving them structure because leads without structure causes frustration for you, by the way. So you need lead, if you're going to buy leads, you need to provide structure. I've done it without structure, just assuming that people would work and assuming that people would don't work that way. Mm, that's good. Okay. It does not that's work. Good. You have got to, because I heard people go, no, I'm done buying people leads. I don't want to buy people leads. I'm like, yeah, I hear you, bro. But like, that's because you weren't given no structure. And I've been there. Mm. But every time I've heard Sean say that he helped help people out with leads or there's some type of lead program, bro, there is mad structure as it pertains Absolutely. to that. Absolutely. All right. And which is expected. So you give them the structure and the structure is typically we have trainings. All right. So we have two live dial days a week. If you're doing uh, virtual sales, we're going to be on there three, four, I mean, like five, six days a week. But Mondays and Thursdays, you're going to be on dials. OK, so we want to let people know. Well, actually, let me, I'm, I'm, I'm getting too ahead of myself. So let's say they haven't even taken their test yet. And they ask me, hey, how do these leads work? I have to go, hey, um, the leads work. They're the ones that like they people fill them out and they come back to us and they have their phone numbers on them. That's how they work. So you'd be, like, be like, that's the answer. Yep. That's the answer Sean gave me. Whenever I wanted more, he gave me less. Whenever I wanted more, he gave me less. Now the trick is Steven, why did I, when people ask me for more, I gave them more when I started. Mm. And even still to this day, sometimes I ain't even going to front. Like I'm like the best at it. Okay. I still give them more, even though I know they can't, they can't even stomach more, but it's something to do with my ego. It's something to do with, I know the answer. So let me feel like I'm needed. Right. Versus if I give them the short answer, now it takes what could have been a 15 minute conversation and me feeling good about myself to a two minute conversation and fuck. And Steven could be pissed at me now. Here's the point, and Sean said to this, he's like, you got to not care if people are mad at you. You got to not care, because you, you got to know that if you answer that question for 15 minutes and they like you, you're only hurting them and their family in the long run. Mm -hmm. 
because they're not even ready for the answer, but you gave it to them. They're going to go home and tell their wife that they had a great conversation with their mentor, Dom, but they're still broke. Versus, hey, I called Dom about those leads. He just told me that, yeah, they're the ones that filled them out and I need to hurry up and finish my tests. That's actually helping him more than answering all the questions about the leads. And that's what I mean by short-term goals and structure. Short-term goals and structure. All right, because if we don't give them that short-term goal of get through the course in a week, pass it, then you'll be ready to rip. Now they're going to be asking you all these questions before they get there. So I want to stop those questions. So during that first conversation, I'm letting them know, setting a clear expectation. Here's what your next week is going to look like. All right, if it takes you longer than a week to get through the course, I don't want to work with you. Straight up and down. And that was hard for me to say early on, Stephen. It was hard for me to say because I did want to work with them. But I had to realize that like I was desperate. I had to realize that I have to stand for something. And I can't just keep taking people who take 10 days, 15 days, 16 days to finish the course. I only take people, if you're unlicensed, who finish it within a week. You're like, well, what if it took them eight days? Well, then they had COVID, cancer, they got admitted to the hospital, they had chemotherapy. Something happened. Something <laughs> happened. That week. But we can't just take, well, it just took me a little bit longer. Now, I've had people who took it the test three times and it took them three weeks. I like that person. I'll work with that person. But the first time they took the test, they were done within a week. Make sense? It's not about are you failing? It's like, do you do what you say you're going to do? And do you say, do you do what, what do you do you hit the do you hit the goals of the structure that was provided to you? And if you could do those things within those parameters, dude, I'll work with you forever to the end of the road. I think that's one of the things I got good with Sean is that, dude, I may not be the best at stuff, but bro, I will run the play. Absolutely. Like I, I will run the play. You'd be like, dude, you're not, I'm like, dude, I'm not the best. No way. There's guys that do, but he knows he calls the play. I'm gonna run to the best of my ability. Will I do it right? I don't know. Sometimes I will. Sometimes I won't. Will I intentionally do it? Screw it up. Nope. And that's all, that's really all you can ask for <laughs> when you're looking for people to work with. Will they give it all their guy? And will they come back and check and do they want to get better? No matter how bad or good you are, do you want to get better? Short-term goals and structure. So through the course, a week, any questions about anything else that doesn't pertain to how they finish that course or anything else, I don't answer it. My staff doesn't answer it. Where you need to be planning if you do have a team or you do have staff, do you need to, in, or your team as well, let the people around you know how to speak as well. Because if they call you up and they get an answer of, no, nah, dude, that don't matter. Just finish the course, bro. You're good. But then they call your staff and your staff tells them like, oh, no, do this. And this is how the leads work. And mortgage mailers are over here. And then now they're confused as hell. Now they're like, Dom told me Dom was an ass. And he was just giving me the short answer. And then his staff, Jasmine, talked to me for an hour and just told me all this other stuff that I don't know why Dom didn't tell me that. Well, she was just trying to be nice. Didn't know what the hell she was doing. It's okay. Right. And I failed because I didn't communicate with my staff that I already talked to this person about this. So if they double back and try to ask you something, this is how you answer it. <laughs> and we have to do that with our leaders. We have to do that with our peers. Does that make sense? There's yep. been things that I'll be like, yo, Steven, hey, there's this guy, dude, he may call you over here, doing boom, boom, boom. He's like, got it. Give him a heads up. Yep. Because if he walks in and he don't know, he's going to, he's going to handle it that way does that make sense but if i give him the heads up he goes oh yeah i see what this agent's trying to do got it boom makes sense so we have to make the people around us aware of how things are going to go if we want things to be simple short term and we want to get people in the field fast because all we're trying to do is take away speed bumps dude that's all it is speed bumps in the road if it's letting people know hey dude people around you you shouldn't talk to them like mom, dad, cousin, uncle, if they're not really, are they supporting you right now on this? No, kind of not. Well, then don't talk to them. Don't talk to them at all. Now, if you do talk to them, that's your choice. And if you come in negative and things like that, just be clear. I told you that they're negative, that they don't know what they're talking about. Doesn't mean they don't love you. They love you. My mom, God, she was my biggest fan when I started in life, be clear. But when I got into this, she was not. Did I think my mom didn't love me? No. I just thought that I needed to level up. I needed to set myself apart a little bit to get, to get somewhere. So I tell stories like that. 
you got to tell stories about how you struggled a little bit with family and things like that. You're like, well, I didn't struggle with family. Well, shit, make it up, dude. Talk, <laughs> you know what I mean? Talk to somebody else who did struggle with that. Makes sense? Like you, you, you've got to always set yourself up to like, you want to get agents to dial the phone three times in a row, right? A lot of people, I hear that all the time. Agents, my agents don't, they don't call the phone three times in a row. Well, Easiest way to do it is to tell them that you had a trouble that you had trouble doing that. Yeah. That's the easiest way to do it. You want to get people to door knock? Say that you struggled at it. You want to get just you did it. You'd be like, I didn't. See, I have a guy I work with, his ego won't, al- won't allow him to. I'll go, hey, dude, hey, when you started, how hard was it for me for you to dial the people three times in a row? Not at all, dude. That was easy as hell. Like, I'm like, bro, you're crushing the training right now. You're actually not even helping right now you actually make <laughs> makes sense like i do, do, do it's like there's you think everything that sean says that went wrong is like th- th- we have to learn how to relate when you learn how to relate the speed bumps they get smaller or they just they're not there no more right see i'm going after these athletes and stuff because we can relate so that the speed bumps of is this guy full of shit is this so we can alleviate some of that stuff make sense that's all i'm trying to do is like can we find relatability to bring down some of this other crap (laughs) and you want to do that with your agents as well so how can you relate to them me being 11 years in and them being a brand new agent well it looks like i got to remember what it was like to get on the phone and start looks like i better pick up the phone again people like why are you selling i'm like dude we're hiring a base shop dude Mm -hmm. like how do you i don't know how to build a base shop without selling the insurance that they're selling now if i was helping steven and he was running a million bucks and he had a downline and he was dude, different deal but i don't have that in my business so i'm selling so i can relate to my new agent so i can so i can hear what they got going on so i can feel these telesales what that's like all that type of stuff to relate so you get agents in the field when you're relating And I was struggling getting agents in the field when I was trying to relate, Stephen, which is, I called you, shoot, six weeks ago, eight Mm -hmm. weeks ago, about two months ago going, hey, dude, I'm looking at this and how do I get this thing rolling? Because, dude, I want to relate more to the new agent that's coming on, dude, because relatability is scalability. I don't know where that came from, but. That was good, though. (laughs) 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 No, that's. Dude, that's what I got, brother. But you know what's funny, Dom, is like, that's the best part about this business, right? Like, is people think that at our levels that we have it all figured out. And it's almost like the more we know, the more we know that we don't know. Because like, we were hanging out um, this past week. And I was like, shoot, wait a second. Like, how did you do that? And I was like, oh, dude, like, yeah, definitely. Like, tell me more. Because I thought I had it all figured out and vice versa. And this is the reason why, like, one of the best traits for new agents is the the trait of being coachable, that being able to go, hey, I don't know what I'm doing, please help. You know what I mean? And, and like, they, some people look at that as a sign of weakness. I look at it as a, as a sign of strength because I look at it the, as the speed. If, if I don't tell you that I don't know what I'm doing, I'm going to continuously make that same mistake over and over and over and over and over again. It's like in basketball. If I'm shooting the ball and I'm thumbing the ball with my left hand, my ball is going to keep spinning this way. And if I don't ask the coach what I'm doing wrong, I'm going to get really good at doing it the wrong way. Yeah. Instead of going, hey, uh, coach, uh, yeah, that, that, that ball doesn't spin the right way. Um, he's like, oh, yeah, fix this. I might look stupid for 30 seconds, but I'll get a result quicker than the person that keeps doing it the wrong way. Right, right. And so, like, right. in this business, you know, especially with brand new agents, which most of you guys are on this call with our Bayshop call, there's things that you're going to do and you're going to get a result that you go, huh, that didn't seem like the result that everybody else got. Right. And at that moment, you should ask. Because if you don't, you're going to get really good at making the wrong, doing the wrong thing over and over. And what it really does is it costs you time and money. Because when you don't book that appointment, when you should have, this is a potential sale that you could have lost, right? Um, Dom, you're doing really good at setting expectations for new agents. Like, let's say I get started in your group. I get appointed, right? How quick am I in the field? What am I doing, you know, on day one? Let's say it's Monday. Yeah. All right. So you're going to... For example, I had an agent on Thursday, all right? Just got done with all his appointments and things like that. Um, During that time, we want to have you on the phone scheduling for somebody in the agency. 
There's mm. always somebody who needs appointments. Always right. somebody, right? If I went on here right now, somebody would be like, yo, somebody could book for me right now, right? Like, <laughs> right. you know what I mean? So we're always looking for that. So we're looking for the person who wants, who needs some appointments booked for them. Typically, it's one of our top producers too, who just got a ton of leads. And they're just like, yeah, I have the new agent. And they love it too. So now the new agent is booking appointments for the top, one of our top producers. So now they're like, oh shit. And they get feedback like the next day. Like, oh, yo, I just wrote two policies from the policies from the ones you booked. Now they're mm. like, what? Right. So this believability before they even get on for their leads. See, we wait too long sometimes, bro, to get people started. Yeah. I mean, like we wait until all the numbers come back. They know how to run the CRM. They've talked to their freaking Pope about it. Like they've done everything. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like they've done everything. Like they just want to make sure that everything is going to work. And it's like, dude, just get them rolling. And just the confidence comes through doing. Absolutely. So if we can get people doing faster, that's the win. So passed, got contracted Thursday, got on the phone, started booking appointments. Now today, Monday, on the phone for himself, booking appointments. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now today, the goal is, dude, not when I'm, when I'm, when they're booking for somebody else, I just want, I don't really give them too much instruction. Just call, just dial the, dial the leads. Now, when they start booking for themselves, now the pressure really comes on, right? Like they start to feel it a little bit more. So now that I know that the pressure's there, I can't act like it's not right. So I want to simplify, but I also want to be there and let people know I'm there. There has to be empathy there. I lacked a lot of empathy when people started because I would just think, oh, whatever, just figure it out. Like, bro, right. That's not true. Let people know it's okay to be scared. Let people know what the wins are. Okay. When people start, the wins to them is just, did I book appointments? How many of you guys booked 15, 30 appointments your first damn dial day? No one. Zero. Okay. So if you don't have this conversation with people before they start, no matter what they do, it's going to be a loss because every call they get on, it's book 15 appointments every dial day, book 30 right. appointments a week, book 40 appointments a week. So everything that they're hearing, is from a top producer's mindset of like, this is what dial day should look like. Right. So I got to let them know, hey, going into your first dial day, man, I know your goal is book 15, 20 appointments as it should be, all right? But I'm going to re I'm gonna rewire you a little bit because I don't want you to get let down and I want you to win, okay? The biggest win for you today is I'm going to give you 100 leads, all right? 20 of them may be bogus numbers, right? They will never pick up. It is what it is. And then uh, say you have 80 of them out, out left out of that. I want you to get at least 35 to 40 of those people to pick up. That's going to be your win today. Mm -hmm. And if it takes you longer than tomorrow to do that within 24 hours, that means we did something wrong and you didn't, you didn't follow you, like you were, you were distracted. Okay. Now what things can distract you from getting these people to pick up when three people tell, you no, and then you start doing phone script training when three people tell you yes and then you start doing in-home training when something happens at home and then you got to get up and go do this like there's all these things that can stop you from getting these 30 or 40 people to pick up right these are the things i'm going to need you to not let happen okay and how you're going to not let those things happen is 40 calls an hour minimally if you're doing manual dialing if you're doing at least 40 outgoing calls an hour there's no way you're distracted there's no way Anything less than 40, you're distracted. And here are some of those distractions that come with. And, and it may seem like elementary, dude, but you, you've you actually got to articulate it. You've got to say it. It's like when I go to Target with my kids, I learned this the hard way, dude. Like I used to, like I go to Target with my kids as a new parent, right? As somebody who'd never been to Target with your kids who like watch it. Like, dude, you just walk in there. It's a shit show, bro. Because it's, I don't want this, I don't <laughs> but then I learned, I learned, Stephen. I was like, you know what? On the way to Target, I'm going to need to let these fools know what is going to happen, right? <laughs> like, hey, when we go to Target, we're going to go do this. We're going to get some diapers. We're going to get some X, Y, or Z. And then on the way out, if you act right, we can hit that $1, that $1 area on the way out. So <laughs> right. when you set the table, people Absolutely. follow the pressure. But if you don't set the table, chaos ensues, ensues, Absolutely. you know, and so as it pertains to this business, man, you just want to set the table, know what to expect, let agents know what to expect so that they don't get in the target and lose their mind. 
Okay. Like they need to, like, they need to know on dial day, this is what, cause otherwise they're going to be like, dude, I'm getting smoked, man. Nobody's picking up the phone. I know. I know because you're focused on dial. You're focused on booking appointments, not focused on getting people to pick up the phone. And that's my fault because I did not articulate that to you. I got that from Zach Trudowski, dude. You know what I mean? Pits up is like, dude, she's like, you have got to give people the right expectations. Because if you just go, hey, go buy these leads in the CRM, and then they go buy them, but they don't know what to expect from 100 internet leads, why do you think after five people telling them that they didn't fill it out, why should they be pumped up about that? Absolutely. Why wouldn't they believe the other 95 aren't going to say the same damn thing? Right? Like, why wouldn't they? Because they, they weren't taught this. But if it's, hey, buy 100, like I said, hey, do 20 of them, they're going to be bogus, bro. <laughs> Maybe Mickey Mouse, maybe this, that, or the <laughs> other. Hey, look, dude, they may even put their self down as the beneficiary, bro. All right, just so you know. All right, so just know that. But now when they have five people who don't know or say something stupid, they're like, oh, this is what Dom said. Dom said right. this would happen. But so I missed out so much, dude. So you know, get people in the field, on the phone fast and in the field. All came from just making these mistakes, right? And then identifying like, what were these speed bumps? And how do I alleviate these speed bumps? How do I alleviate some of these concerns or these anxious moments that agents have? You with me? I'm with you 100%. That's money, by the way. See, the other thing that um, that I want to pivot to now is, you know, you said being, being elementary. Um, dude, some of the greatest coaches of all time were always elementary. You look at John Wooden. Yeah. John yeah. wouldn't be like, all right, this is how you put on your shoes. This is how you put on your shorts. Like, that is elementary you know what I mean yeah. and it's like you go back to that and it's like sometimes we as managers we 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 gloss over the fact that like yeah they're supposed to make this many calls but like what we assume they don't know right and that's where we can get hurt when we lead a team by assuming that they understand that um you've done a really good job of pivoting you, you sold a lot of insurance face-to-face -face. with the recent transition of virtual sales in the entire industry uh, we had to talk about this about two months ago. You're like, hey, man, I want to learn how to sell over the phone, too, just to be able to say I can teach it. What are right. some of the things that you've understood about selling over the phone that might have been a myth that like people go, oh, it's way harder. Or, oh, it's this, that and the other. What are some of your thoughts on virtual sales now that you've done it? Um, I'll say that I thought I just to be honest, dude, I thought it was going to be harder. Um, and from a point of like trust like likability and things. I was, uh, I was like, how are they really going to feel me? Or how are they really going to like, it's a heart business. Right. And I thought mm -hmm. that I was like, dude, I, I can only get my heart across face to face. And that was not true. Um, you can get your heart across. You can, mm -hmm. um, it is a transactional, more of a transactional over the phone. It's quicker into the transactional, mm -hmm. but during the transaction, you could pull a lot of emotion out. Absolutely. Where, where in person, you weren't really doing too much of that. Um, there was a lot of that before you got into the actual sell. Okay. Um, so that, that was a big piece that I thought would be like this huge disconnect, but at the end of the day, it's the same. Um, but the biggest thing was, and I've heard other people say it, but I didn't experience it was the lead flow, man. Like you need at least twice as many leads. Mm -hmm. If you're used to going out there and helping 30 families out on four grand a month, well, then you need to learn how to do it on eight. Straight up. Absolutely. Because in the field, I can turn 40 into 20, 25, 30, no doubt. No doubt, right? But on the phone, there's no shot. No shot. And if you are doing it, you're really good. And right. sure, I don't know if you can teach other people how to do it. Just stay really good. OK, but that, you know what I mean, like that's that's hard, dude, because there's so many things that you're going to run into. If I told you the amount of people that I've had who I just didn't get their banking or I just started an application and it just got weird or maybe I pivoted over to another app and they didn't know how to sign that app. So they just said, F it like, dude, right. that happened. That would never happen if I was in the home. Never. Right. But also, I would also never be able to be in San Diego making a sale in damn Chico, California. Makes sense? <laughs> so there's a, there, there, there's, there, there, there's a, there's a, I guess, pros and cons to both, but I don't really know if it's cons. I think it's just pros and awareness. Makes sense? Right. I think they're all pros if you're aware. I don't think there's ever a con in doing one or the other. That's <laughs> good. Sense? 
I think you just need to know all the pros and how to stay on the pro end of it. <laughs> Makes sense. Absolutely. Like, and, and so more leads you do need, you need twice as many leads and you have to lock in. Um, I book them every hour, every half hour. All right. If you're doing one call closes, I do both one calls and schedule appointments. I like to mix them, mix them both in. All right. Um, but if you're scheduling appointments, schedule them every 30 minutes and give them an hour window. Okay. So, Hey, Dom, uh, I'll call you tomorrow between three, uh, most likely three latest four, but be ready about three o'clock. If it gets after four o'clock, I'll shoot you a notice or something like that. I've just got really busy or something like that, but between three and four be by the phone. Right. They wait by the phone or even for your appointments to be clear. They wait for the cable man. They wait for everybody else for two hours, three hours, four hours. My wife, we just had a, um, a, a glass was broke at our house. They had the glass guy had to come over. He said, we'll be there between 12 and four. You know what my wife did? Wait between they 12 did. and four. Yeah. Okay. So it's not that abnormal. Okay. You just have to see yourself as the glass guy, I guess. Right. Does that make sense? See ourselves in that manner. You don't always have to be punctual right at that time. That's how you set yourself up to fail right? Set yourself up to win by giving them a window and booking a lot of appointments so that uh, even if you are booking face-to-face -face or in person, you're going to have about 50% of people who aren't there. Absolutely. If you're in person, you may, you may sit down with 60. When I was in the field and people go, dude, you're the best at booking appointments. Yeah, right, dude. I guess I'm just the best at not caring because I was, <laughs> I'd sit down with like 50% of people. My thing was 40, 20, 10. 40, 20, 10. That's what I needed in the field. 40, 20, 10. And in, and, and, and in presentations for telesales, it's about 50, 20, 10. Mm. Would you say? Yep. It makes sense. Like, Absolutely. You, you need more. You need more there. You need about 50 scheduled to sit down with maybe 20, 25. And then you sit down with those. You're going to close at least eight to 10. And you're going to have some couples in there to make it look like you did really good, but you really didn't. You just wrote husband and wife. Right. <laughs> Makes sense. You really, you really only closed four out of 10, but you had three couples. Makes right. sense. But it all works out. But you have to be willing to run those numbers. Just like in the home, you have to be willing to go through the no-shows. You have to be willing to drive to the house and then not be there. So it's all that stuff. It's, it's, it's just time spent, dude. If I take the time spent, of the virtual agent and the time spent of the infield agent, both equally doing 40, 50 grand a month, there's no difference. There's no difference on time spent. And I, and hopefully you're doing telesales and virtual sales to be more efficient and to do more, not to do less. Right. A lot of people, when they look at, at it to do less, they wonder why that they're not getting the same result as they did before. I'm like, bro, you're working less. You did 45 grand in the field and then you did 28 virtual because you worked less, not because it was harder, you know? So I can go on for days, but this is, this is good. But this is, but I'm figuring the reason I can say that is because I'm in it right now with this stuff. And it's just like, I'm seeing it. So all the things that I was like, oh, virtual is this or virtual is that. I'm like, dude, no, it's not. That. No, it's not. And I was an idiot for thinking that. Like, why did I think that? It's not hard. I used to think, well, agents can't start that way. Yes, they can. Yes, they can. I just have to be willing to show, set the expectations. And the reason I said they couldn't start that way, Stephen, was because I didn't know how to set the damn expectations. Right. Make sense? So I would just run to, no, they can't start. No, 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 no. Yes, you can. But here's the expectation. You're going to be on the phone at 7.30. You're going, to, you're, you're, going to not, you're going to be on the phone until 5, 6 p.m. You're going to take maybe an hour of lunch. You're going to be on the phone for 10 hours a day, 60 hours a week. You want to do that? Yep. All right, sweet. Let's roll, We're baby. Good. Right. Make sense? I don't want to do that. You want something a little bit more predictable? Okay, cool. Let's go on the field then. Right. If you want predictable, let's get in the field. If you want to just sit from, sit at home and do some hard work, we can do that. But it's going to be 60 hours a week. Absolutely. I don't give a damn how you cut it. It's going to be 60 in the field. It may be 40 in the field, but you have some phone drive time and stuff like that. It's going to equal to about 60. But actually, the real work time, it won't feel like it as it would in telesales. Absolutely. And that's what I'm seeing is the biggest differences is that when you're teleselling and virtual, you're all in all the time. Makes sense? At least when I'm in the field, I, at least I know if Sunday I'm not in the field, I know I'm not in the field. And when I have 10 appointments, I know I got 10 appointments. One call closing is kind of scary to me. That's why I like to have appointments. 
Makes sense. I couldn't yep. imagine just starting my day just going, I got these leads and I'm just going to make it happen. I don't know. I'm, I'm not there yet. Maybe in two weeks. You know, I'll <laughs> yes. uh, see, I became the crazy one call closer, but that's not where I'm But at. see, that's the beauty of this business is there's more than one way to do it all, right? There's yes. a lot of people that go, there's like, like one of the guys that I work with in our group, he goes, no, you, you have to do one call closes. And I'm like, well, what if they're at work? What if they're dropping their kids off at school? What if they're in the middle of grocery shop? Like, I can't do the appointment right then and there. Right. And then there's some people that go, you only do it this way. And that's not true, too. It's my whole thing. It's based on what the client wants. If the client is able to do it right now. All right. We're going to do it right now. If the client can't do it right now. Then we'll push it later. You know, but but that's the nice part is you said something that was so good, man. You said the the amount of time of a 40K producer face to face and the amount of time on a 40K producer virtually is the same. See, like the difference is like a face to face agent can wind down when they're driving in between appointments while a virtual agent has to be on the whole time because he's on the phone. 100 percent, dude. So it feels like you're working more. But if you actually look at the work done in, in terms of time inside of a presentation, time on the phone, it's the same. And that was so good. So good. Um, one of the questions that someone asked, and, and I ask a lot of virtual people this all the time, you know, a lot of people ask, do you send your driver's license, NPN, state license to establish credibility on virtual sales or do you not need to what is your thought on that dude i do it i do it um not for the appointment but i do it when they show for the appointment or i am doing the one call close i do i open up with it it's dude it's a very very good transition into this is business right in the in person i never did that because dude i'm at your house already bro right it's weird like it it solidifies that it's business honestly i thought it was weirder when people showed up with like their name tag and stuff like i never did that like i was just nice. like I'm a, I'm a professional like they know like yes i'm here like i don't need that but oh on the phone i think it's very very good to do very good to do and doesn't mean you won't make sales without it i just think that you're going to find yourself and you're going to find yourself in those positions where people don't want to give you stuff because you didn't give them anything Mm. And that's really all it is. It's just an exchange of let me give you something so then you can start giving me stuff. Right. That's real. That's really what I see it is. And it's um, dude, it's the transition to start the start the deal is, hey, would you uh, grab a pen real quick? I want to give you I want to give you some information and they find it. And if they can't find it, I go, hey, I can text you, though. Can you get text while you're on the phone? All right, cool. I'm going to text it to you right now. Read it to me once you get the text and they read it to me. NPN one, two, three, eight, seven, seven, six. All right, sweet. That's my number there. If you get screwed over, you don't like me or something. Not if you don't like me, I may piss you off a little bit. Okay. Be clear. <laughs> but if I do something to hurt you or you like, you know what I mean? Be clear. Like that's my thing. That's my number right there. So you can see if I'm legit. So I take it away from a little bit, like letting them know like, Hey, I'm here. Like, yeah, I'm not saying we're not gonna be friends and all that type of stuff, but like, that's how you're going to track me. That's how you're going to find me. And I got this from Brandon kitchens. He says, um, that's how you look me up. I don't have anything negative on record and I don't plan on starting today. Right. I think I heard him say that before. Right. Absolutely. So, I started, so I started saying that right to the, just to let them know, like, all right, here's my number. Here's who I am. And I'm already aware that you probably, sh that you don't trust me. I get it. So I think it's a very good thing to do. When yeah. You it ain't an objection to bring it up first. Right. Just yeah. like a lot of people like to get defensive where they get to the objection they go whoa, whoa, whoa here, here's my license and it's like dude <laughs> could have gave that to them beginning the could have gave it to them at the beginning yeah yeah absolutely um another question that we have spencer asked dom on setting expectations early can you highlight how do you portray one week in the course um that it's only 10 that, that that it's man to be honest with you that it's only 10 chapters 11 chapters all right and you can fail the stuff as many times as you want, right? And it should only take you about an hour to get through each chapter. So if it takes you longer than a week, you're just not serious about it, man. There's no shot. And the best thing for you, Spence, is how long did it take you? You put in the chat, how long did it take you to finish the course? Four days. Well, why, 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 why is it hard for you to expect them to do it in four days? Absolutely. Now, this is the part. Now, this is the damn part, bro. This is the part, Stephen, that we, me, I did the same thing, dude. I'd be like, well, I did it, but I don't know if, like, they can, if they can do it. Like, right. I would rob people from the glory or, like, like I did something special. Right. I didn't do anything special. They could do the same thing, too. So, Spencer, it's, dude, I finished it in four days. You should do it in, like, two days because I ain't that smart. 
All right. So if you like, and that's how you communicate it, dude. But if you communicate it to where, man, that thing was tough, dude. I did it in four days, but I'm like the best test taker. And I'm just like really yeah, smart. Don't do that. You're going to freaking screw people up. Right. Versus nah, dude, it's super easy. You should finish it. Downplay, simplify, 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 and just downplay it. Yeah. It's dude. It's, it's, it's just reading, you know what I mean? But um, cool. Hey, Dom. So as we wrap this up, I have a few more questions. Um, yeah. A lot of people go, cool, man. These guys got their integrity deals and they're working harder than they've ever done. Right. Yeah. And they don't know how our deals are structured. So they don't understand how incentivized we are. Right. But a lot of times we are working harder, not because of us, but it's because we want to pay it forward to help them get to where we are too. Can yeah. you kind of talk about like, like a lot of people think integrity is the end goal. And we in the club, we go integrity is just a start. Yeah, dude. Um, see this, I didn't have any goals. Like when I started this thing, I didn't know what integrity was. I didn't even know what selling your book of business was. I didn't know anything. Right. It was hire more, sell more. I was just on the team. I was like, like to be on a team. It was, it was, it just feels good. And I don't think my reasons for being a part of this will ever change. Um, but the, and I say the reasons won't change is like whoever helps the most wins. And that's mm -hmm. always been it. And when you get to this position of you have these resources, you have folks that are, you know, on your, on, on your, on your team, dude, like you were on the Yankees of insurance right now. It's pretty cool. But that doesn't mean that there aren't other people who still want to be on the Yankees. That doesn't mean just because I got my Jersey that, Oh, it's, it's all done. So I know that there's people out there every day. And that's why that's what changed for me, man. I went from hiring Steven, just hiring to, man, I want to actually hire and help people and mentor people that I truly, truly want to help. And you're like, what about all the people over the past 10 years? Doesn't mean I didn't want to help them. I had to figure it out, dude. I think right. the, I think the doctor went from, I don't think the doctor started off as a specialist, bro. I think he started off as a fucking general doctor. Okay. And then he turned into, oh, I specialize in this. Right. And I think over the past 10 years, dude, I found out what I wanted to specialize in. <laughs> Makes sense. Right. And, 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 and dig into that. And so seeing, but so, so I, I'm seeing people that I want to help, man. I'm seeing people that I want to. And, and the funny thing is, Stephen, I'm seeing the people before they're actually people. Like I don't have the names of the people. And I think that's what's getting so crazy about this is like when your vision becomes like, holy shit, like I, I know who I'm trying to help. I know the avatar that I want. I know who the, what the feelings that these people are having that I can help fix, right? Like if I'm a, 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 a dietitian, right? And I'm really good at helping people like lose body fat. Well, shit, dude. Like I found my niche. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's like, that's your, not all dietitians that maybe that's not their thing. Maybe one's is gaining or doing this or having more healthier living or more holistic lifestyle approach. Who knows? You have your niche within that space. And I think all of us need to really not see it. Like today on the builders call with uh, Nina and Hayden, dude, they, they found their niche. Does that make sense? Yep. They found like, this is where, this is where we feel we can help people. And to Sean's point to you the other day, Stephen, is we have to have some respect for ourselves and really say like, you know, like I am good. Like I am able to help people. Like I, I can solve these problems. Make sense? It's not, right. I hope I can help people make money. It's, I know I can help people make money. So Spencer, to your point, if I know I could teach you how to go out there and make 30, 40 Gs, why in the hell would you not finish it in four days? But if I'm guessing that I can, if I'm hoping that I can, that's where people start going. That's where it may be kind of hard to push to finish it in a week. Makes sense? But Sean never questioned, could he help us get to where we want to go? Which is why he never not pushed us. Makes sense? And I think sometimes we question whether we can do it or not, myself included. And I think to your integrity question, I'm trying to prove to myself that I'm worth it still. And I think through that, I got to show people that they can, that they're worth it too. A lot of belief from me comes from helping other people and still belief in them. Mm -hmm. 
Do you know what I mean? Like the way my son believes in me, oh my God, it helps me believe in me. Yeah. The way my wife believes in me helps me believe in me. Makes sense? And I want to help more people believe, dude, so I can believe. So I know it's a long ass answer to your integrity question, but no, that's, a, that's a great one, man. Because dude, I, dude, it's like, sometimes I just, you know, like you said, I, I was the, I was the kid in basketball that like the, the, I needed the team more than the team needed me. Yes. You know what I mean? And, and I'm like, and when I joined family first life, there was no such thing as an integrity partnership. When we got started, it was like, yo, can we feed our families? Like that, that's where we started. And then it was like, all right, we got that off, check mark. Okay, let's help other people feed their families. And then it was like, check mark, we got that part done. And it was like, then we started growing this thing and, and it got to a point where we, you know, have an opportunity to do a partnership. But it's like, we don't lose sight of, like you said, the basics, which is at the end of the day, who, who can we help? You know, and, and one of the things that I think you've gotten really, really good at, at least from the distance that I, I get a chance to see from you guys are, is you, you, you zeroed in on your niche, which is your big hitters. And, and not only that, it's like, instead of working with like hundreds and hundreds of people, you're like, let me just work with this core little group and let me get them rocking. Cause I can influence these guys out of 15, 20, 30 agent level versus hundreds. And I can get these guys and I can teach them how to do the same. Then we'll be at the hundreds. Right. And it's like, sometimes you get quality and then quantity. And I think you're doing a phenomenal job at that right now, dude, you're, you're killing it. Absolutely. Well, dude, I, um, it's, it's. I appreciate it, but just know that it's it's because of a lot of the fa failures and, 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 and things that you go through that you, you make correction, you know what I mean? And it's all about making correction. Even this, Tom Hanks says this thing. He goes, this too shall pass. Mm -hmm. You guys probably seen this on Instagram. If you're on the same algorithm as me, you've seen it, okay? <laughs> you know what I mean? But this too shall pass. This too shall pass. Good or bad, it will good or bad dude you feel like everybody's rocking with you things are just freaking killing it this too shall pass absolutely you feel people hate you it's the worst at this and, and that's i just have to be cognizant of that dude so as we're moving i have to remember this too shall pass and just be very just 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 stay after it stay after it dude because you can do a lot with a little bit and i think a lot of us were head faked you know with a lot trying to try a lot trying to do a lot Mm -hmm. and which equals nothing and a lot of <laughs> right. stuff you gotta clean, which equals a lot of stuff you got to clean up too and um just finding the right people man and just and sean's thing and i wanted to do with this dude sean's thing was 20k to 20 uh 20 20 agents to 20 yeah when i started with him that was his thing 20 agents twenty thousand. i've 11 years later have adopted that <laughs> <laughs> right that makes sense You'd be like, why didn't you do that earlier? Dude, because I ain't that smart, bro. I'm sorry. I'm it took me a while, okay? But it does, all right, so now it's just like 20 agents, 20,000. And we're on the way, dude. We got four over the past five months, new agents that have popped to 20. And um, our goal is now to pop two a month, okay? Two a month, and by that, and that's just direct. And if they pop two below them, that's cool. But versus this whole, I'm going to hire a million people. It's like, dude, mm -hmm. I, enough to try to keep up with Andrew Taylor. Like, I'm sorry, I love the guy, but that's what I was <laughs> trying to do. I was, how do I keep up? Dude, I can't, dude. He has a direct pipeline with contracting agents. I have no clue. So <laughs> this is what I, all right? And that's tongue in cheek, obviously. I love him to death. He works his ass off. But I just know that like what, what, what works, what works for one person doesn't mean everybody has to do it. And you got to find what works for you. And at the bottom line is profitability at the end of the day. And that's one thing I've looked at with integrity. They're never asking me what my overall volume is. They're asking me what your profitability is. Absolutely. And I know if I'm profitable, my agents are profitable. The way we're structuring it. Because there's no way I could be profitable, my agents not be now. And mm -hmm. that's what keeps us all healthy right now, dude, is that mm -hmm. you know, if somebody calls me up and goes, dude, I'm not profitable. It's like, yeah, I know, bro. I'm not profitable with you. This is not working <laughs> out. Makes sense? Right. Back in the day, it was like, they're not profitable. Well, dude, it's just five points. Who cares? Like, right. you know what I mean? Like, I hate to say who cares, but how could you care when you're really not invested? And now we're in this game to where we're really invested together, where we, we both need to see it pop on both ends. So absolutely. Thanks for having me, bro. Dom, I appreciate you, man. If there's anything we can do to return the favor, please let us know. And uh, if y'all haven't had a chance yet, go make sure you shout out and thank him on social media, tag him, blow him up. Um, but this is great, man. This is one of the best calls we have. And we're going to definitely 
set some expectations with brand new agents, get them down on the phone, in the field, selling some insurance, protecting, protecting family. So once again, hey, thank you everybody for hopping on and uh, we'll see you at the top. Be blessed. No doubt, man. Thank you all.